model eats a lot. You remember this young chap? Yeah, I'm angry for those who've uh, forgotten me. I was around for season one of this model eats a lot. We forgot you. Everyone forgot you, Angie. That's the way it goes. You stood. I must say, I've missed being mean to you, so. I haven't, so it's been fun for the last couple of years. What have you been up to? I've started, uh, well, started taking over to my own cafe, so I'm on the other side of, of the camera down and uh, serving the food out instead of just tasting it. Unlucky you. Yeah, I know, it's a hard life, isn't it? We're at Camus. Camus is a French Algerian restaurant and it's the only one in Melbourne which is quite cool. The chef is called Pierre Corgia and he actually comes from a Michelin star background so the foundation is French cooking and then he's taken inspiration from his mother's roots which are Algerian so I think what he's done is just given different varieties of um, Algerian food so his own interpretations of Algerian food. The spices that they use in Algerian cooking not too dissimilar to what a lot of people used to with Indian and Malaysian and cuisine so yeah. um, something not nothing to be scared about. Yeah nothing to be scared about. I'm expecting a lot of big flavors, you know, like star anise, um, cinnamon, um, turmeric, which yeah, is turmeric. So what we have here is two-way sardines. Off the style as well as fillers. It's got some really interesting aromas. Like normally uh, sardines are sort of the smell is overpowering, but she really want to eat this. Yeah, I definitely do want to eat this. That kofta, that sardine has infused into the kofta. And it's got that little bunch of heat right at the end of the bite. I hit you in the back of the throat. Not too powerful, but just enough to let you know it's there. I reckon sardines get a bad rap. If you don't cook like this all the time, I'd be eating it 24-7. Um, not very fishy, that, that fillet doesn't taste very fishy at all. You just get the flavour of the marinade and, and the sauce underneath and it's a slight like, seafood. Okay, Camus signature dish, low cooked goat with cinnamon, fresh apricots on top and almonds. There are some pretty interesting flavours to the dish. I want to see your reaction. Okay, I'm going to dig in. Go, go. I'll take the best bit. I wanted that bit. It's so mean, Amy. Too hot for you? I think I need a moment. Absolutely brilliant. Melting your mouth, brilliant. There's a hint of sourness at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not stringy or chewy like goat can be sometimes. I think I've had some pretty bad goat as a kid, so I've always <laughs> been really scared of it. I just think that it was a protein that people really knew how to cook back then. Yeah, and normally goat's very gamey, and that sweetness that comes through with from the apricot, it, it takes away that gamey flavour, doesn't it? I chewed ten times max to digest that. And it's not overly fatty either, like man. No. The problem with lamb sometimes is that it is too fatty and it needs to be fatty to you know, keep that tenderness about it. Lucky enough, you had first bite. Yeah, this souffle is amazing. If you love Turkish delight, you will absolutely go nuts over this souffle. It's got that real rich rose taste through it, and it's not too sweet like a lot of Turkish delight can be, but you get all those nice rose based flavors. That is nuts. That is hands down top five dessert that I've ever tried in my entire life. Oh, it's, it's pretty good. Do you know what? The texture is just like... It's cloud like. It's a, it is literally like a cloud in your mouth. I want to dig into this uh, halva ice cream. The halva ice cream, okay. Halva is a... It's, it's fun sugar, but with, with some cardamom and some... And, um, and pistachio and stuff. Baklava is a bit different, isn't it? It's, mm. Normally baklava, it's, it's drooping in sugar syrup and it's a bit like, oh, should I? Yeah. And then five minutes later, you're like, why did I do that? I never have baklava. I'm, I'm very sensitive to overly sweet um, dishes. That's why I generally never have Indian sweets as well. So, but this is very... It's very balanced. It's, um, you get the, the essential ingredients of the buffalo without it being drenched in that, in that sugar, sugar syrup, syrup that keeps it, that makes it so heavy. I think dish of the day was the last one, the dessert, because it really was unique in terms of a 
adding texture in terms of flavors. Yeah, I like yeah, I like what dishes do that. Like it's flavors that you know, but uh, represented in, in a different form. We all know that Turkish delight is that burst of rose water. Yeah. But it's also like a chewy jelly um, type of dish that not not a lot of people like the texture of it. But you know, if you like souffles, you're gonna love this. And, exactly. And um, hold the represented as an ice cream. And for mine, uh, the goat, the goat. Oh really? The goat is the, the way to go. Yeah. It just melted in your mouth. And yeah. You have that that sour sweetness from the apricot and right those intense spices of the yeah, cardamom and cinnamon and all the, all the stuff that you know I've grown up with. Thank you so much, Kamu, for having us. Everyone, get down here and try it out. It definitely is worth the hype. I think. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be back. Thanks again, Angie, for being on the show with me. Um, we're going to see you on another episode, aren't we? Yeah, very soon. Uh, keep tight lipped about that for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like the series, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great week, and don't forget to eat a lot.